In this video, we discuss the importance of discounting the future when we're talking about climate change policy. The most pivotal difference between economic studies on climate change is the discount rate. How much future costs and benefits are discounted to put them in present day values. The choice of the discount rate is one of the most contentious issues in climate change economics. In fact, the choice of that discount rate could completely flip policy prescriptions. In terms of our cost-benefit analysis in economics, or Caldor-Hicks idea, is we're asking do the benefits of eliminating or reducing an externality exceed the costs. In this case, it's climate change. Specifically, is the stream of discounted net benefits positive, right? Because we have to think about the future, especially with stock pollutants. So, very simply, with cost-benefit, if, if yes, we should look toward a solution to the problem preferably the cost-effective or efficient, efficient solution for economists. If no, then at least by our cost-benefit analysis, there's no problem in the sense that welfare cannot be increased through changing behaviors. Now, for economists, and I'm quoting William Nordhaus here, Nobel laureate in economics, all economic studies, all economic studies, find a case for imposing immediate restraints on greenhouse gas emissions. But the difficult, difficult question is, how much and how fast. And it's the discount rate that looms very large in whatever that policy prescription is. I want to quickly recap a story um, about how important and influential the discount rate is by looking at what's called the Stern Review. That's a shorthand for a report commissioned under Tony Blair um, by, at that point, Lord Nicholas Stern. He's an economist at the London School of Economics present day, I believe. But that report had was one of the first kind of publicly released reports that got a lot of attention in the press uh, about the need for immediate and drastic reductions in climate in, in greenhouse gas emissions. And the review estimate that if we don't act, the overall cost will be equivalent of losing at least 5% of global GDP. That's huge each year, now and forever. And if wider range risks is kind of low probability, high in impact events are taken into account, it could be up to 20% of global GDP in perpetuity. In contrast, right, so these are the benefits of action or the cost of inaction. In contrast, in contrast the cost of action, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, can be limited to about 1%. So if you're looking at these summary stats here and, and you're thinking like an economist in the cost-benefit sense, you say, well, we've got to do it. We've got to act immediately to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Quoting Hal Varian, another economist, some very intelligent people have argued that giving future generations less weight than the current generation is ethically indefensible. Other equally intelligent people have argued that weighing generations equally leads to paradoxical and even nonsensical results. And the reason that I put this quote here is that the implications of the study relied on a near zero discount rate, which means that we're at a near zero discount rate, we're essentially treating future generations' costs and benefits equal to today's generation's costs and benefits. Nordhaus, as William Nordhaus's critique of the Stern Review, is he kind of offers this thought experiment, right? Essentially, the review proposes that the social discount rate is essentially zero, right? So we have a near zero discount rate. And it's this little paragraph here. So suppose scientists discover that a wrinkle in the climactic system would cause damages equal to 0.01% of output starting in, 2020, in 2200 and continuing at a rate thereafter. The question he asks is how large a one-time investment would be justified today to remove that wrinkle starting after two centuries, right? So essentially this was written, you know, around 2000. The answer is that a payment of 15% of world consumption today, or $7 trillion, would pass the review's cost-benefit analysis, right? We would spend a tremendous amount of money today to avoid something that would cost 0.01% of GDP 200 years from now, essentially. And this seems completely absurd. The bizarre result arises because the value of the future consumption stream is so high with near zero discounting 
that we would trade off a large fraction of today's income to increase a far future income stream by a very tiny fraction. I want to quickly revisit Hal Varian's quote because he's talking about very intelligent people with different ideas of how to treat future costs and benefits. If you're thinking about why we discount future benefits or why most of us think you discount future, future costs and benefits at all, just look to your own life. You can think of a, an example of somebody giving you $1,000 on January 1st, or you could forego that and take $1,000 on December 31st of the same year, so 365 days later. Now, I'm willing to bet that all of you would prefer to take the money January 1st rather than the same amount, same dollar amount in on December 31st. There could be all kinds of reasons for that. One of them is inflation, right? Typically, if we're predicting what prices are going to do, they usually are going up. And so um, your money is more valuable on January 1st than it would be a year later or two years later or five years later or 10 years later. Second is that you could do something with that money. You could take it on January 1st and invest it, get an annual rate of return. It might be around 5 to 8% if you put it in the stock market. Um, the other thing is there's uncertainty, right? Heaven forbid, but maybe you don't make it to December 31st. And so there's a, you know, you're going to weight the current or the, the present um, more heavily uh, than the future. All kinds of different reasons why people discount uh, uh, future costs and benefits. The, the interesting and the thorny element here is that we're talking about a social discount rate. We're talking about a social a government, a regulator that is trying to, you know, do the best for its citizens. And so some of those kind of private implications for discount rate may not apply or should not apply when you're talking about societies. Let's get into some of the details about how we discount future costs and benefits. Right. So discounts a technique employed to add and compare costs and benefits that occur at different points in time, put them in present value. And to do so, let's consider two projects, A and B, that have a stream of benefits. We'll neglect costs here that are the following. Year zero, this is like this is like today. And year one is next year. So this is kind of a four-year project considering today and Project A, 20 in year zero, Project B, 50, and then they get Project A gets 20 in each of the years, Project B, 10 in the following three. Now, if we simply sum these up, they're both 80, right? So they both have the same value if we don't discount at all. They would have the same present value of $80. But let's say that we do employ our typical methods of discounting, which project is more beneficial or has a higher present value of the stream of benefits. And to do that, we're going to use what's called the discount factor. And so this is the present value. This is going to be the dollar amount we're considering in each year. This is the discount rate. So if you set that to zero, right, that would be the same thing as not discounting uh, the future at all. And T is the time or years away. And T is zero, right? When a t is zero, then the denominator is one, and that is the current day. All right? So we're going to use that to compare the present value of these three two projects, and we're going to use arbitrarily a 6% rate. Let's create a table kind of under the initial table. This is project A. And we're going to use our discount rate. So we know that in year zero, the values are those values, right? Because we go back here, we plug in zero for t, that denominator turns to one. And so in the current day, project A yields a benefit of 20 and B, 50. But what about next year for project A? We're going to use our discount rate. So you, project A yields a benefit of 20 in the next year. But we're going to use our discount rate of the following, right? So again, T0 is the current year, T1 is next year. And if I compute this, right, this discount factor, I'm going to get 
I'll plug it in here, 18.87. Okay, that's what that is, 18.87. And if we're going to compare project B, right, that's $10. And that would round to $9.43. Right? And you can continue like this. But if we want to do the discount factor, right? I'm using the discount factor here. Or I'll pop it up, I'll pop the formula just in case. Okay, so that's what I'm using. And again, this is $20. And then two years from now, it would look like this. And then this is $17.80. And we'll do one more for project B. It's ten dollars they're receiving. Present value of that is eighty dollars and ninety cents. And we can fill in and in total, right, the sum seventy three forty six. 76.73. These are the discounted present value benefits of the two projects. And so, but with that discount rate of 0 0.6, the discount rate of 0 0.6, the present value of B exceeds the present value of A. So, A, B would be the project with a higher present value of benefits. This graph kind of shows the importance of discount rate looking at different rates in different dollar amounts. So on the, on the left-hand side, this is the value of $100. This is the value of $100 at a discount rate of 3% looking into the future. So at year zero, it's worth $100, but 100 years from now, it's worth $5.20 if we discount at 3%, which is kind of the, the lower bound of like the office management budget in the United States for discount rates for regulations. This one, alternatively, is looking at the present value of $100 100 years from now, at different discount rates. So you can see at the 3%, this is the 520, right? That's the same thing. But if you discount zero, then $100 today is worth $100 100 years from now. And if you go to 6%, which again, the higher bound of the OMB discount rate is 7%, so we're not even there. $100 worth is worth 29 cents. It's worth 29 cents 100 years from now at a discount rate of 6%. So you can see how this matters tremendously in terms of the cost-benefit analysis and, and policy prescriptions and implications. Let's look at a few more uh, formulae for discounting the future and then one more problem. So the present value of a perpetuity is actually easy. A perpetuity, right, is just a value that you're going to, a dollar amount you're going to get this year and every year in the future. So perpetuity is a dollar amount you're going to get every year. And the estimate of the present value of that is simply the dollar amount divided by the discount rate. So we need a positive discount rate in this case. And then you can think back to our previous example of project A here. You can see that they were earning $20 for four years, including the current year. And that is an annuity. That's an annuity because the dollar amount is the same and you're going to get it for a fixed number of years. A, a stream of benefits or costs that's the same or fixed every year for, for a definitive number of years, you can use the present value of an annuity formula. And so it depends on how many years you're going to get it, but you plug that in here. Sorry, here, that's where you plug that in. Your discount rate would be something we use like 6% and the dollar amount that you'd get every year is this. Let's look at our second and final example. Suppose, Today's generation is considering a course of action that has certain short-run benefits of $40,000 per year 
for 50 years. So for 50 years, you're going to get $40,000 a year, but it has significant costs. The costs are born in the future, but starting 50 years from now, a million dollars, you would suffer a cost of a million dollars a year forever. So the question is using our cost benefit analysis is, is the action welfare enhancing? Does it cost benefit analysis? So let's look at the benefits first. It's the present value of the benefits. And this is in the case where we can use an annuity because we know for 50 years we're getting 40,000. So if I say present value of the benefits is going to be that 40,000, right? I'm just using the formula for the annuity right here. 7% discount rate shows up there, minus T, get that for 50 years. And we divide by discount rate, 0.07. And I calculate that. You could either use you know, Excel or a calculator. This is the present value of that annuity. 50 years getting 40,000, it's worth 552,000. $29 in the current year. Now we have to compare that to the costs, right? The present value of the costs. It's a little bit more complicated because we don't suffer costs until 50 years from now. So what we have to do is, but then we, when we suffer them, we suffer them in perpetuity. So we need to find the value of that perpetuity, but that value of that perpetuity would occur in 50 years from now. And then we just discount it back to the present day. So that value of the perpetuity is a million dollars divided by the discount rate. And this is in 50 years, we're going to suffer a value of $14,285,714.29. Okay, this is the value in 50 years. Value of the perpetuity in 50 years. Discount this back to the, to the present. We're going to take this, put it into our discount factor. So we're going to get, and that is going to equal okay, so we have benefits of this kind of short-term benefits, 50 years, we get 40,000, and then the costs and we can see that the present value benefits exceeds the present value of the cost. And so we would do this action. The reason I use this example, this is kind of, at least qualitatively, not numerically, but qualitatively, what we're kind of doing with fossil fuels. We're getting short run benefits, right? Maybe for the next 50 years or so. And then we're going to start really incurring significant costs. And given a discount rate of 7%, we would choose to do that. But I encourage you to plug in a discount rate of 1%, and you'll see that this will flip. And when you discount the future little, or put a low discount rate on the future, then we would choose not to do this project. The, the, the benefits of it would be lower than those costs.